Welcome back to Carnadies.org. Today we're going to be continuing with our series Six Months of Set Theory and Higher Order Logic. This is Logic 301. In this video, we're going to be looking at what is a set. So, according to the Guinness Book of World Records, the second edition of the Oxford English Dictionary, the word set has more definitions than any other word in the English language. Though there are arguments that in more recent years the word run has surpassed it. But most basically, by a set, when we're talking about logic and set theory, we mean a group of things. This is a very broad definition, and we will provide formal ones later. But for now, think of a set as a group of things, like a set of silverware, or a set of china, a set of chairs, a set of kings in your hand if you're playing cards. This might be a group which is defined by a particular property. So we could have the set of all seahorses. They're defined by the property of being a seahorse. <clears throat> or it may be a group that's defined explicitly. We could say the set of my left foot, the moon Europa, and Mohammed Buhari, the president of Nigeria. When we look at the difference between classes and sets, we're going to offer a more rigorous definition of sets because we are doing a bit of class set theory. Now, not everyone's going to make a distinction between classes and sets, so we're going to fudge around with the labels of classes and sets sometimes. Sometimes we'll just be talking about sets when we really mean classes and sets to bring everyone on board for people that aren't using class set theory. But when it matters, we'll make a clear distinction. But more on that later. And over the course of this series, we're going to learn about the different properties of sets. That's this first month. This first month is the properties of sets. In the next month, we're going to look at relations of sets, things like unions and intersections and all that. For this month, we're talking about properties of sets. Sets can have only one member. We could have the African Renaissance Monument. They could have no members, for example, the set of all round squares or infinitely many members, the set of all grammatically correct English sentences, or include sets of themselves, the s sets themselves. You can have sets within a set. The members of a set can themselves be sets, and when we're looking at set theory, most often they are. You could have the set of all reptiles, the set of all horses, and Billy Joel, and your set is the set of the set of all reptiles, the set of all horses, and Billy Joel. We'll look at the distinction between having a set of a set and just having a set in a future video. That may sound really complicated, but I promise you it's not. Sets and classes are generally represented in logic with italicized capital Latin letters, similar to properties or relations. Unlike properties or relations, these letters usually stand alone and in italics instead of being paired with the individuals to which the property applies. So in other words, you might represent nom is smart with SN, S standing for the property of being smart and N standing for the individual nom. This should just be review from propositional calculus, predicate calculus, and all that work we did before. If you haven't watched the first series on the basics of logic, or you don't have an understanding of basic logic, it might be a good idea to do that now. On the other hand, you might represent the set of all smart people as S, you see how it's in italics that it stands alone, equals, and then curly brackets, X bar, X is smart, or S... The italic one represents the set, equals x bar sx, where that second s represents is smart, and the first s represents the set of all people that are smart. With s standing for the set of all smart people, x for the elements of that set, and s for the property of being smart. Don't worry if the notation is confusing right now. We're going to explain it in greater depth in a couple of videos. But for now, the takeaway is when you see italicized capital Latin letters, those are sets. You'll also see italicized lowercase Latin letters to stand in for some kinds of sets or for set variables. Check out the videos in propositional calculus to get a sense of the difference between variables versus the actual things that are naming things. But for now, italics means sets. Up next, what is an element? 
Watch this video and more here at Carneades.org and watch a new video every single day for the entire month of October. Stay skeptical, everybody.